Welcome to Acer Robotics. I'm Acer, and on this channel, I'm gonna be showing you my robotics projects, starting with that hexapod. Really quick disclaimer though, come here. This video is not a tutorial. If you want a tutorial, let me know in the comments. And yeah, I really did build this in three months from scratch. I do web dev as a job, game dev as a hobby, but I've always had an interest in robotics. These last four or so months, I've been feeling pretty burnt out. Uh, so in the beginning of December, I started looking for a project that would take my mind off software dev for a bit. I decided to go with an Arduino powered hexapod. There are some amazing hexapods online, but my main inspiration is the MX Phoenix hexapod by Zenta. It looks stunning and it walks smoother and faster than any hexapod I have ever seen. So I wanted to build my own. I kept track of my progress for this project by posting updates to Reddit. So I figured I'd split up the video in the same way. I started with a single leg. I bought three servos, an Arduino mega kit, screws, 3D printing inserts, and a lot more. And then I got started designing the leg in Blender. I'm fully aware this isn't the industry standard, but it's what I knew from game dev and you know what, it worked. Once the leg was designed, 3D printed, assembled, and then wired up, I got to work on the inverse kinematics. With a working inverse kinematics formula, I can take a 3D point in space and turn that into three servo rotations where these rotations will place the end of the leg at that 3D point in space. After a ton of searching around for a video that explained IK that I could like actually understand and could implement into my situation, I finally found a video by Angela Sodman. By following the video, I was able to write down the actual equations in, in my notebook. I translated those equations into code and it miraculously worked. There was an issue though. The servos were jittering pretty badly. Um, I tried like everything that I could think of to fix it, but it just wouldn't stop. I wasn't able to fix it. So I decided to try buying three servos from a different brand. I made the next update just under a month later. The three new servos from a different brand were completely jitter free. So I ordered 15 more and got to work. I redesigned the leg to fit the new servos. I printed three legs and I printed an entire new base. To make wiring the servos into the Arduino Mega significantly easier, I ordered a custom designed PCB to attach to the top of the Arduino Mega. This made wiring the servos extremely easy. I used, uh, the channel is called How To Mechatronics, um, his PCB design from his Arduino Ant project as, as a jumping off point, since the project has a lot of similarities with this one actually. The walk cycle is made with two lines, and these lines are the path that the foot follows. The first line is um, basically, it starts forward and pushes backwards. And then the second line starts at the end of the first line and lifts up and goes back to the beginning of the first line. If you combine those two, it, it makes like a semicircle. So to make the legs actually move, the code constantly grabs points from um, from these lines and tells the leg to move to these points. And the point that's grabbed depends on how far along the leg is in the walk cycle. Five days later, I had an update with the three other legs assembled and the hexapod actually walking. I also managed to get the radio control working. I used two NRF24 chips, one on the hexapod and one on my controller, which was a breadboarded Uno. Since I got the controller working, I was able to link the joystick up with uh, the hexapod speed, which allowed me to make it walk in a relatively straight line. Five days after that, I was able to add one of the most important updates yet turning. Now when I say turning, I don't mean rotate in place. That was insanely easy. All I do is make all the legs move in the same direction. What was much, much harder to do was have it turn similar to like a car. The solution ended up being pretty intuitive actually. The idea is to average together the walking straight and rotating. So here's how I did it. Whenever you're in the aptly named car mode, Two walk cycle points are calculated at the exact same time. 
the straight walk cycle, and the rotation walk cycle. A point is generated for both, and a new point is made based on the weighted average of the straight point and the rotation point. The weights in this weighted average are determined based on how far um, forward and backwards you're pushing the left joystick and how far you're pushing the right joystick left and right. Now, it wasn't perfect. The legs would jerk around a bit um, if you quickly changed direction. And, and this basically had to do with the code just not being right. Uh, it would tell the leg to go to one place and then if you change direction too quickly, It'll, it'll basically, on the next frame, tell the leg to move really far away. The fact that this worked at all was frankly amazing. I, I was worried I wouldn't be able to get turning working and I'm, and I'm really happy I was able to. It just feels so good to control it like that. The next update didn't come for almost an entire month, but oh my God, I changed a lot in that time. The new servos I was using uh, although not jittery, they had a tendency to blow out. So I actually ended up ordering new servos that were the same brand as the original servos. I figured out that by adding a little bit of friction to each, uh, to each joint, the jittering disappears completely. So to do that, I, I added a little hub cap to each joint that I was able to, that I'm able to screw and unscrew. Um, and the tighter I screw it, the more friction there is. Now, because these new, new servos are a different size, I, of course, had to redesign pretty much the entire thing. So I redesigned the leg and the frame ended up being cracked. So I redesigned the frame as well. For the frame specifically, I not only added a built-in battery holder, I made it slightly shorter so it was able to fit on the build plate all as one piece. I was also able to turn the breadboard controller um, into a fully polished remote control. It has two joysticks, two sliders, two buttons, and one on off switch. I also completely fixed the leg skating issue. The legs would jerk around if you change direction too quickly, which obviously was not good at all. I fixed this by always starting the walk cycle at the position that the previous walk cycle ended at. It sounds pretty obvious when you say it out loud, but I was not doing this. I also added a new mode, crab mode. When holding the right button down, the left joystick will make the hexapod strafe in any direction you push the joystick in. So forward, backward, left, and right, and, and everything in between. And finally, and most importantly, because I linked the distance from ground to the right slider um, on the controller, if I rapidly increase and decrease that value, it jumps. That's it, congrats, you're up to date. As of recording, this is where I'm at with the project. My current plan is to release the code the 3D models and the build instructions for free, for completely free, just open source them. So in addition, I will sell a kit that has all the electronics um, that, that you need. So instead of having to buy all the different parts separately, you can just buy them all from me. And in addition to that, I wanna sell a course that goes in depth on basically just everything about this project, how the code works, that's a big one, how how like to 3D model, how to 3D print. Let me know what you think about this uh, kit plus course idea. The next video is going to be a lot shorter than this one. Uh, instead of five updates, it's just gonna be one. And in that update, I'm going to cover two main things. One is a completely redesigned PCB. The current one is really cramped, so I made a new one that is so much better. I cannot wait to show you guys. And then the other thing is kind of related. It's uh, wire management related. So um, I, I got some, some wire mesh tubing, and I also slightly redesigned the frame. It's going to make a huge difference. I can't wait to show you guys. Make sure you're subbed so you don't miss it. If you have any suggestions, 
ideas for, for the Hexapod, um, any tutorial requests, please let me know. Please let me know. Uh, the feedback is really appreciated. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.